While box office success and the quality according to audiences have been pretty well received with recent animated movies, right now it's not necessarily a golden age for animation if you're an actual animator. As on the actual business side of a lot of these animated studios, lately it's been a pretty depressing time in the animation industry. As just recently, even Pixar have just been exposed for allegedly overworking their employees, and then in the same week we've had Lionsgate outright replacing theirs with AI. Yes, really, it's actually happening. On both fronts right now, we are just starting to learn and see the skyrocketing exploitation of animators and visual effects artists in Hollywood. And in fact, if you look further in the past couple years, we've been seeing it everywhere. Sony got called out for it last year for crunching their animators in the lead up to Across the Spider-Verse. DreamWorks is just culling their animation staff for much cheaper side studios. Disney's either firing or overworking theirs, which I guess does make sense for an almost monopolizing company. Not at all meant to be the best of the best and surely the best for their workers too. And Lionsgate now, threatening to end these professions entirely as a human career altogether. It may be a scary time for anyone in a creative industry, but for these artists, this is right now. But we'll go through the scandals one by one, and we'll start with Pixar, who are now finding themselves in hot water as 10 former employees have spoken out about their negative experiences at the studio. Former being the key word because Pixar have had their biggest ever culling of staff earlier this year. Remember that earlier drama about the woman that saved Toy Story 2 from deletion? Yeah, her firing was part of that culling. She had been at the studio from basically the beginning, and they still just cut her job off. No loyalty from the top down. According to reports, animators on the production of Inside Out 2 were pressured to grind through consecutive seven day weeks for months and months on end. And it's not just for Inside Out 2 either, this apparently bleeds over to Elio that's obviously in production right now as well. And of course, this is not the first time we've seen reports on overworked animators and visual effects artists on a project, as just last year we learned very similar about the insane production behind Sony's Across the Spider-Verse, where the animators were massively overworked there and it kind of takes away some of the magic of the movie. So yeah, I guess that means we're going two years running now where the best received animated movie of that year turned out to just be incredibly problematic productions. I mean, hopefully the delay to the third movie are to compensate for them not repeating this behavior, but clearly Pixar and Disney did not get the memo there. To say the least, the expose that IGN have done on the studio does not paint a pretty picture. The report describes a studio driven by fear and no longer operating with the best interests of its employees in mind. And while I guess that would make sense in the perspective of Pixar, who were very much in a desperate state before this point, still isn't really great for what is known as a giant titan of the animation industry. For one of your best studios to be this lowbrow is really crushing, because wouldn't that be a dream job to work at Pixar, and now this is what the workload actually looks like? Hopefully with the success of Inside Out 2, they can ease off a little bit, but uh, we'll see. And with this being a consistent thing through Inside Out 2 and Elio, it adds an entirely new layer to the mass firing of staff earlier this year. Now, Inside Out 2 was universally beloved by audiences this summer, but it looks like a bunch of the people responsible for it were just completely mistreated on the project and unceremoniously pulled from their jobs afterwards. Does that now add an extra stain to the legacy of what Inside Out 2 is? The highest box office success for an animated movie, built breaking the backs of the people that made it. And in other contexts, I guess that suddenly explains why the heavily delayed Elio movie that we got a trailer for a year ago and nothing since now explains why it was so delayed. As someone who loves Pixar, this is incredibly disheartening to hear. I get that there's pressures coming down from the money-hungry mouse house, but Pixar aren't blameless here either. And I'm afraid to say, it looks like at least some of the blame's heading straight for Pete Doctor himself. He is the figurehead of the studio now. And this guy's behind some of Pixar's best movies, Monsters Inc, Up, the original Inside Out. But in the report, it is suggested that his oversight has to be on everything the studio is doing to an unhealthy degree. Employees saying, you cannot do anything without Pete, literally nothing. To the extent it's even alleged he stepped in to direct a lot of Inside Out 2 himself, despite the credited director being Kelsey Mann. The employee said, 
I mean, you saw the end result of that. Inside Out 2 made a billion dollars at the box office. That was a direct result of Pete's involvement. Pete's a genius. Nobody can dispute this. And for comparison, in later years, not even Walt Disney himself micromanaged to this extent. So that's one thing, Pete being too hands-on with literally everything. Though, thankfully, not as hands-on, I guess, in the John Lasseter way. And to be fair, that's a good point to remember, that this isn't the first time Pixar have had a major scandal surrounding their internal work environment. Even in their golden age, they were led by a guy who made female employees uncomfortable for years. Great. So, as difficult as it is to face, this is a company with long-standing workplace issues. However, in terms of the toxic work environment at Pixar now, a good chunk of the blame's been pointed at the other studio executives, allegedly completely disinterested in the well-being of its employees, acting on their own self-interest. What a surprise. One employee said, I think the biggest feeling that I heard around the studio before the layoffs, and even now post-layoffs, Talking to people who are still there is that everybody feels like the executives are really just acting in a fear-based way. Everything is to preserve their own power in their own jobs. So I think morale is really low because people no longer trust that they're being led with their best interests at heart. And this just isn't in line with the Pixar of old at all. This used to be a daring studio that could make big hits out of original ideas, not one led by sheepish executives playing it safe to steady their jobs whilst completely neglecting the people actually making the movies. And whilst this is how things have unraveled at Pixar specifically, evidently this rot has spread from Disney corporate. That fear in the executives is coming from somewhere higher, and it brings into question just how toxic things have gotten at Disney on a wider scale. It's well documented at this point just how turbulent a time it's been over there. We've had Bob Shapek coming in as CEO and completely undervaluing the animation output, which is great when you're in charge of, you know, Disney. And then specifically on the Pixar front, he was responsible for moving their theatrically intended movies onto Disney+. Plus. The whole corporation pulled a full 180, kicking out Bob Shapek and bringing in Bob Iger again, and they've been making sketchy decisions to help the company financially recover ever since. Case in point, culling thousands of jobs, including a Pixar. And even with the voice talent of Inside Out 2, it hasn't exactly been smooth sailing. Remember how Bill Hader and Mindy Kalin didn't return for the sequel due to Disney refusing to meet their requested fees? We had warning signs across the board of the penny-pushing goings-on behind the scenes, so just imagine how the people without those public profiles have fared on this production. Consequently, I can see why, from a worker's perspective, it's not exactly been a fun time. Another employee said, The internal culture of Pixar right now is really tough. There is just an incredible amount of people who are like, I can't do this anymore. And that's not all. Remember the disastrous performance of Lightyear? Yeah, apparently that wasn't the fault of the terrible and confusing marketing campaign. Instead, they'd taken that as a cue to run away from young and inexperienced directors. For a studio that has been a champion for creativity and stories that other studios would never tell, to hear that this is how things have got is pretty devastating. But it's not the most damning thing somehow. So again, this is just from an IGN expose. They have taken testimonies from 10 employees, but that is not a complete undisputed lock-in for this information. With all that said, according to the interviews in this article, Pixar received pushback for the same-sex kiss in Lightyear. And this allegedly led to a philosophy of universal storytelling that anyone can relate to, which came into play during the production of Inside Out 2. You may notice that Riley was very keen on Val throughout the movie, like, she really seemed to like her. To the extent, it almost seemed odd that it wasn't a romantic interest. And yeah, that's because apparently it originally was more of that persuasion, and according to IGN, there was major editing work on Inside Out 2 beginning in September 2023 to remove any romantic chemistry between Riley and Val and just doing a lot of extra work to make sure no one would potentially see them as not straight. Wow, Disney really prayed the gay away on this little number, didn't they? It didn't work, everyone still picked up on that vibe anyway, glad all the work was worth it. But even still, with both the Bible Belt in the US and China on their mind, I guess, it does call into question Disney's motives with this kind of decision. I don't know, it's just so disappointing to hear, you know? I may not have faith in Disney, but perhaps ridiculously considering they own them, I really did have better faith in Pixar over this. I remember even after Disney bought the studio, it seemed as though Pixar still had a free voice to make the films they wanted to, 
as a studio. However, with this news, I'm just not so sure anymore. And you can bet that Lightyear as well leaned into that by them having a semblance of an insinuation and then putting it in a movie that flopped. That only helps to push that kind of narrative more to squash any kind of good sense of representation. Great. Same with Onwards. I think it looks more like over 20 years, Disney have systematically clawed their hand into the puppet and now have asserted their full powers over Pixar. A micromanaging creative head, scared power hungry executives, some employees overworked to the point of I can't do this anymore, and others that no longer have a job at all. When I found out that DreamWorks were gutting their animation operations to outsource their projects, I was gutted. Now I can say just the same for Pixar. Two giants of animation in the 2000s, both now pushed around and reshaped by owners they didn't have 20 years ago. It's brutal to see, and with Toy Story 5 and Incredibles 3 on the way, I think the mandate from the man upstairs is clear. And that's the least bad of the two stories. Hello there, thank you for making it to the halfway mark of this video. As per usual, do subscribe if you haven't already, if you want to keep up with any animated movie news. I'm sorry it's negative, the industry is certainly going through a bit of a pitfall right now. We also have a Patreon on the side in case you want to get some bonus content like raw scripts, raw audio, or raw bloopers. It's a lot of raw, it's a whole back alley of raw. Never mind, either way, come to the Patreon if you want to financially support us on the side, and I'll let you get back to our ramblings of Pixar and Lionsgate scandals. Ooh, lovely. And that's the least bad of the two stories. While putting together the script for this, it's just been revealed that Lionsgate has announced that they have invested in an AI company called Runway, with the full intention here of using them to generate storyboards and visual effects, which, if you hadn't joined the dots already, is not a good sign for the human beings currently fulfilling those roles. Also, uh, just wanted to give a shout out to Cartoon Brew for the article on this, um, because more importantly, they used Norma the North as their poster child for it. I think it's very clear to see what these journalists are opinion of this news is. I just find that hilarious. Hmm, wonder why they're looking into AI doing it all for them. And in fact, this is the first time a major studio has gone for AI to this degree. We got our first taste of this threat last year when both the writers and actors striked were actively having to fight for the major studios not replacing them in a similar way, and let alone that, the actors fighting against their digital likeness being uploaded to a dystopian database so that they can appear in future movies without the studios having to employ or pay them. God, that's horrendous. However, it looks like studios are now going after the creatives that don't have the backing of such formidable unions. That being the worst treated sector of the industry, storyboard and visual effects artists. We've talked about overworking these people, now they have the if you don't want to work, we can replace you with a machine threat to poke them with as well. I mean with DreamWorks outsourcing their animation, all that's left on the production side are the writers and storyboard team. In the next 10 years, you never know, they could be running without a single thing being done in house. Anyway, back to the present at least, we've now officially had our first studio try to enter the human replacement program, as if we haven't had AI shoved down our throats by every other tech company under the sun. And I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm kinda not surprised that Lionsgate just so happens to be that studio. They are the smallest of the major distributors by a long shot. It's almost funny that 20th Century Fox was the one that got bought out. But considering that they are smaller than other studios, this has not been a great summer for these guys. The biggest flops this summer have been Borderlands and The Crow, with Megalopolis only expected to join them as the biggest bomb of the year. Can you guess what connects those three movies? Yep, they are all Lionsgate movies. Just zoning in on Borderlands, this movie has ended its run on a 32 $0.7 million gross. This movie cost up to $120 million to make, and this gross is barely enough to cover what they spend on marketing it. That is a huge loss for a studio at the scale of Lionsgate. Not to mention, this isn't the only sketchy thing in the face of disaster this year. So they are the ones who agreed to distribute directing legend Francis Ford Coppola's passion project Mechalopolis, which by the way, he self-financed by selling his entire wine company. Oof. Consequently, Lionsgate aren't the ones necessarily at great financial risk here because not only did the guy pay for it himself, but he also had to pay them to distribute it. Which, by the way, otherwise never happens. However, still concerned about having yet another major failure under their banner within two or so months, they made some interesting decisions in the marketing. 
In the wake of poor reviews from the festival circuit, they put bad reviews for The Godfather and other Coppola classics in an attempt to say the critics aren't always right. However, what made this worse was that it transpired that some of the bad reviews for these acclaimed classics weren't necessarily real. Yeah, Lionsgate faked the reviews as well, or at least misquoted the articles they got them from, making these trailers just completely misleading. These are the kind of people we are dealing with. Adding in last year's Hunger Games relaunch, also underperforming, I wouldn't be surprised if they were a bit tense behind the scenes as well right now. So really, the fact that they're putting technology in place that opens up potential to cut down their workforce is no big surprise. It's just disappointingly predictable. And if that wasn't bad enough, the company they have invested in already has a sketchy reputation on the creative community and are in fact in the middle of a lawsuit for copyright infringement. Great investment, guys. Ah, uh, classic. To be fair, it wouldn't surprise me if most AI firms were being sued for this kind of thing, considering these kind of databases need the information and content in the first place to be able to remix them in the first place. In fact, I found out that um, one of my actual videos, one of the first movie videos I ever made about a Playmobil movie, has been sucked into some AI database because I wrote the script on Google Docs. I don't know what to do with this information. Uh, I'm glad I know it. Uh, it wasn't a good script anyway. Maybe I'll redo it. Consequently, a lot of people's work is being sucked in to be restructured and passed off as AI can generate this stuff out of nowhere. Spoiler alert, it can't, even if it gets better. All it knows is built off of stuff that was created by actual human artists first. But you know, the more pieces of work you slam and mash together, the less recognizable it is where you got it from. However, in the case of Runaway, this wasn't disguised well enough and now they're being sued. To be fair though, even if the company wasn't in the middle of a lawsuit, all eyes would still be on Lionsgate here. They have truly opened Pandora's box, and it's not hard to speculate about how others may follow. My dream scenario would be that big names boycott Lionsgate until either they reverse this trajectory or go out of business, but considering they're behind a lot of those awful Christian movies that promote incredibly problematic ideas, Maybe that'll be a blessing. However, I'm not sure we'll see that, unfortunately. Even as a smaller studio, it is still one of the major distributors and holds a great deal of influence. Plus, AI is just brewing everywhere and it seems like we can't really stop it. And so, as long as they're not trying to break any union rules, they can absolutely do this. The big question is, will this lead to some sort of strike and will people actually consume AI movies? As far as I know as well, there just isn't a union presence in the visual effects sector to the same degree as there is with SAG or the WGA. But for the little voice there is for these artists' rights, I hope they speak up soon. With technological advancement, there has generally been a practicality to its introduction. Even in the creative industry, we have seen incredible work come out of the advancement of computer graphics and innovation. However, I just don't see the merit of removing creative opportunity for us as a species. Part of the wow factor in music, painting, filmmaking is the sincerity that comes with somebody made that. Usually quite a lot of people made that. And now the supposed next step is replacing that quite a lot of people? Recently, all these tech brands are bragging in their commercials about all these AI features without actually considering whether their consumers find that to be a good thing, or are just absolutely terrified by it. The only people who seem to really want this are the people at the top of the tree who've been told this technology can make them all the more money as another way of cutting the people below them. It's just like those at the top of the oil monopolies, who you can lecture however you want about the disastrous environmental consequences. They don't give a monkeys. Look at how much money they have. And to an extent, that's the AI game right now. It's an AI space race. The latest gold rush, except in this case, the gold can take your job. I thought it was meant to be that AI was gonna get rid of the grindy stuff so we could go and enjoy life and flourish with our own creativity. Not AI taking away our opportunities for creativity. If our movies aren't gonna be made by actual people anymore, then maybe I don't wanna watch them. Especially if it's Norma the North 5. But what are your thoughts? Am I dooming and glooming about the animation industry saying this is the fool of it all? Or is this genuinely an unsettling underbelly that is slowly gonna brew and expose itself over the next coming years? Lionsgate, Pixar, DreamWorks, or Sony, do tell us your thoughts on all the drama of business. But for now, I'll be ending things off there. My name's been Daz, thank you very much for reaching the end of this scandal ramble, and I shall see you in a little bit. Ah.